Are you saying you faked with me? Yeah. wrong now you're single what do you know about sexual relations is it true that if you don't use it you lose it i'm a little worried about being a slut you're listening to the come with us podcast presented by darling way talking the good the kinky and the ugly here are your hosts beth aaron and tina hello hello you sexy holds and pulls I'm really liking that. I think on my dating profile, I might just put I'm a hole seeking a good pull. Anyway, welcome. Come with us podcast where we've got all the naughty, sexy, fun conversations that everyone wants to listen in on. I'm Beth Darling, sexy genius, dean of sexyedschool.com, where smart, successful, and even spiritual people go for their graduate degree in love. And it's my pleasure today to be here with brave, bold, beautiful Tina, the good and gorgeous and sometimes grumpy Aaron. And today we're, <laughs> we're laughing because it's okay. so true. But dive into all things love, sex and relationships. Particularly today, we got what women want men to know about sex. That's it, guys. We want to help you out because it is hard. We don't like as a woman, I don't even know sometimes what I want you to know. But I can be very disappointed that you don't know it afterwards. So we're going to try and give you some of our top hints and tips, tips and tricks. Yeah. For tense polls. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. Hi, hi. You're trying to give don't somebody just the tip. Yes. Yeah. There you go. You're okay. so out of your element on this I one. I am. I do, I'm, do, I'm liking the poll thing though. I don't know. But anyway, just yeah. like dancing around the poll and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, okay, what, what, what have we got? I think, Tina, you said you found a list from Dr. Ruth. Mm -hmm. So surprisingly, or not surprisingly, she wrote a uh, book or she wrote, you know, those dummies books, uh, you know, blank for dummies, whatever. She wrote, I guess, sex for dummies um, or a type of sex for dummies. Um, So this is uh, the list we found online. And I guess we're just going to go through it and see. Um, we obviously have a man here, a pretty experienced sex. P- what are you, p- professor, PhD? Shh. I forgot. I'm a JD, but <laughs> JD. I, I'm, I'm good with sexpert. Yeah, yeah sexpert. I'm good with sexpert. And me who, you know, just... Wild woman? has Yeah, has a good yeah. amount of experience under her belt for... Uh, for a young for a youngin yes all right i like that okay so let's think about what do women what do we want our guys to know about so sex? should we go through this list yeah or? start yeah okay i'm so, sure we'll <clears throat> i'm i know aaron's got some shit already he's dying i'll he's, probably call bullshit on some stuff he's, yeah, he's got his cheeks his dimples are showing he's well, grinning so much this, obviously awesome. dr ruth is i would say she's like very lauded she's very experienced so this isn't going to be one of those like you know cosmo articles this is going to be like what she wrote is a little bit i think like more for someone who's looking for maybe more like serious answers but i don't know what do you think yeah so i think that give a background on dr ruth for anybody who doesn't know yeah who the hell she is because i don't even think she's still doing anything anymore she is but she's like 92 years old I, i met her a few years ago so she was the most remarkable woman she's like four foot eleven she literally left um uh germany i don't think it was germany maybe it was austria or something on one of the kinder trains she was five years old she had to leave her parents go off on a train to switzerland i think to go live in an orphanage or with people without her parents because of the holocaust she then somehow migrated to um Israel at some point and she was a sniper in the Israeli army this tiny little woman and in fact she was wounded in in the um in Israel there so she is feisty as hell she has energy I saw her she was 90 years old 500 people in this auditorium and I that woman rules like her feet couldn't reach the ground from her chair but her energy filled up that room even though she's 90 years old so she's incredible she um was teaching and then she ended up, um, she was in New York and Cornell Medical School wanted her to teach people about sexuality, like how to teach sex, you know, sexuality or something or for social workers. And that's where she was then when somebody asked her to do just a, a Sunday night show on the radio about sex. It was a call-in show. 
they expected nothing of it. But suddenly her her phone lines were blowing up. And within six months, she was like the biggest thing to hit New York airwaves. So she is tremendous, amazing, because she has this accent and she's teeny tiny. And she was at least in her, you know, 50s to 60s. Um, when she started talking about sexy, so she couldn't really offend people. She was married. She has um, at least one daughter. Um, so wild. But I admire the hell out of her and give her all sorts of kudos because she is very, very blunt. She just really helped people in such a loving way. But I will tell you that my, the only thing that I would want to improve upon is that she spoke from the pulpit. So when she was interviewed, I think it was Diane Sawyer, um, and asked about her sex life with her husband she wouldn't answer that. And that's where I think the disconnect is. Because to me, if you're going to advocate that sexy is healthy, it's natural, it's good to talk about it, it's okay, then you have to be able to do that also yourself. But again, she's incredible. And this is nothing more than that. It's just that we all have our different approaches. But as in my career, what I've tried to do is to say that I will share my stories just like I hope others will. And I do it by way of example, because I do think that The reality is sexy happens to all of us, the good, the bad, the ugly. And the more we talk, the better we do and the more comfortable we get. So aside from that, Dr. Ruth is absolutely my hero. And even when I was, so let's see, she's 90 years old. So 40 years ago, I was a kid. And if if I'd been honest, when people asked me what I wanted to do, I would have said I want to be Dr. Ruth. And she's still obviously putting out stuff because I'm looking online and says Dr. Ruth's roadmap for dating apps on swiping. So, you know, she's she's, still, she's trying, she had a TV series or show and stuff. She's, she is a feisty woman and she is going to live until she doesn't. So kudos to her. You know, it's just, anyway, she is incredible and there's a lot of value. She also, she did step in some hot water, some different things, but again, nobody over a 40 year career is going to get everything right. You're going to disagree with them. You just have to respect that above all else, Dr. Ruth is always who she is. She's got no airs. She doesn't, she's not political. She doesn't say anything just because somebody else wants her to. She absolutely tells it straight in her way. And that's, you know. We need yeah. that in this world. So, so all right. anyways, so she has this list. Okay. Um, and so I, I think we're just going to go through it and see what we agree with and what we disagree with. Um, all right. So get started. Yeah. What, where are we first? Okay, educate so me. Educate, Tell us. Educate. Educate. Yes. Let's see what, what we think, he, what One she thinks he should know, things. and we'll see if he knows it. So, chiv- so first thing she put is chivalry is not dead or isn't dead. Um, yeah, it's not dead. Right. Um... I can read what she says, but basically talk about, um, you know, Just sum it up quickly. Yeah. Uh, she says, I believe most women still enjoy being treated like ladies bringing, and then she talks, oh, she prefaces this, you know, like this isn't like a don't, ultra feminist. Don't come for her. Bringing a woman flower, chocolates, taking her out to dinner, texting, calling her during the day. All these little details are important and they show, um, that you care. So, okay. And I would say that this actually applies right back. You can call it chivalry or not, but I think that each of us wants to be seen as special. We want someone to go out of their way a little bit for us. We want them to give us signs of respect. Mm-hmm. But this and, is what we're doing this yeah. one for, for... Right. So it's for women, but still, yeah, I'm, I'm okay flipping it back, but okay. Time for rebuttal? Yeah, go ahead. All right. If you want to be treated like a lady, you better fucking act like one. Don't, I don't act I, every, like a lady. I don't want to be treated like a lady, actually. Well, okay, then this isn't for you. Okay. This is the whole but point. What about is that women? She just said women want to be treated like ladies. If that you want to be true. treated like a fucking lady, if, you, if you're one of those that wants to be treated like a lady, you better act like a fucking lady. Okay. How many viral... It's September. Football season is here. How many viral videos have there been so far of people getting in fights in football stands in public, and 90% of them have been because the woman has started the fight and expected her dude to just show up and fucking knight in shining armor and fight five guys for her because she can't shut her fucking mouth. You no, don't, you don't if think you're going that's to... ladylike to expect your man to fight for you? Okay, and I will also <laughs> combat... To, I'll come back... Okay. Yeah. It's one thing to expect him to fight for you. It's another thing no. to start a fight for him and then just go, oh, yeah, you got this. Right. So I uh, actually have off. a different opinion. I know she prefaced this with ultra feminist, but I hate i hated it when my so my dad i probably comes from my dad because he insisted would op, would have to like open my car door 
for me. So like he thinks it's like a gentleman's thing to come around and open a car door. And yeah. I would always turn it around and say like, that's fucked up. Like right. I can open my own car door. Like even Plus like, I don't want to wait in the car long enough for you no, to no, walk no, around. No, it's usually when you're like getting in the car. Oh, well then it's just nice. Yeah. I don't that's know. Okay. I always thought it was like, I'm not, and I'm no like ultra feminist, but I think it's just like really to me stupid. Like, and I, I guess like, but then again, like I do like it when someone holds the door for me. So I guess it's, but it's I, so I believe I like to hold the door for somebody else too, man or woman. I just think those are little courtesies that are just nice. And my deal, because I am pretty much an ultra feminist, I just don't think they have to fall on just one gender, mm -hmm. but there, there is turnabout. But, but I would say my, my qualm with lady is that like to be ladylike is to sit quietly, is not to voice an opinion, to not to stir things up. And I, I don't want to get in fights at the football it. thing, but I do want to be able to talk about what I think is and, and interject and, and you know, participate in conversation, not just serve tea and sit quietly while the men talk. So anyway, but that's that's, that's a difference of opinion from generational stereotype yeah. because guys in my generation, when we say, you know, act like a lady, we don't mean sit in the corner quietly and, and don't I know. just it's, yeah. behave. Okay. Be yes. something, be, be somebody, reasonable. be respectful. Yes. Okay. So I got that. She, okay. And then she, I will say, I'll say the end and this is, she has a second point. She talks about empty gestures are only going to make you satisfied. It's actually, I would say I don't really agree with this ending sentence. Although you may be proud of your conquest for a while, time will come. She talks about like being chivalrous only to get women in bed. A time will come when you realize what a lonely life you've led. Look like, yeah, so, I, so the short version is, if you don't mean something, don't do it. If you don't, right? right you're, but at the again, same time, like if you're give, a total asshole, and I just right. want to sleep, you, I know you just want to sleep with me, and like, and I just want to sleep with you. Even if you're like, if you're a total asshole, like it's not going to happen. Right. Like, put in some, like you have to put in some effort to get me in bed. Like I'm not fucking, you know. So at the same time, like I just think you have to know what the intentions of the person you're going out with. Right. Are. But I think really, so what she's saying is be sincere. If you want to do things, then do them because they matter to you, not because you're trying to uh, well, look yeah. a certain way, not because you're trying to fake it. Right. I think bringing flowers when you don't really care about somebody and stuff, taking somebody out for an expensive dinner just to show off your money and whatever doesn't really do it. I mean, it, it just depends because it, it depends on how you were raised, too, because like I was I was raised here in Texas. I was raised by a mom and. Uh, family members that if I didn't hold the door from the time I was about eight years old, if I didn't hold the door for whoever was walking behind me, man, woman, child, old yes. person, Spider-Man, I don't give a shit. You, I got fucking hit upside the head and told, what's your fucking problem? I went to school in Tennessee. You would think, <laughs> still in the South, I held doors for girls. Every girl would smile at me because I was the only guy on campus of a campus of 5,000 that would always go out of his way to hold the door to make sure everybody was, everybody was cool. That was sweet. And, but... At the same time, like, say you go on a double date with your buddy and you are you weren't raised like that. You weren't raised to pull out the chair for her, open the door for her, hold the door for her, do stuff like that. If you weren't raised like that, but you see somebody else doing it, maybe it is a good thing to copy that until your brain comprehends why it's a good thing to do. Yeah, and, and again, I would say the same thing with courtesy. Right, that right, that's what it is, and I yeah. love that you said you would hold the door for man, woman, child, or you know, Spider Man. It didn't, it didn't matter. It was just this idea that it's polite yes. to hold the door, and if you're young and healthy and can stand there, it just makes people feel good, and they smile at you, and you smile at them, and it's like, oh, look, somebody just was nice to me today, and it takes nothing. So I like that. I used and to tell my kids like, you can't, you can't cure stupid, you know, but you can cure rude. And that's the thing. So I never, I never give people a break when they're rude. I just find that that's Well, we talk ridiculous. about going back to acting like a lady. I've had it one time in my 32 years of existence where, uh, I'm not going to use the words I was going to use, um, decided to yell at me that she, she doesn't need a man to hold the door open for her. So cool. Guess what I did as a man? I shut the door. I put my foot in front of it and I said, good, open the door. You have my full body weight as a grown man. Open it. Open it. Open it. <laughs> oh, that's my God. right. That's so silly. You can act like a cunt or you can just walk through the door and say, thank you. Yeah. You decided to act like a cunt. You will deal with the consequences of being a cunt. Act like a lady. If somebody holds the door open for you, whether they're doing it to date you or not, just go, hey, thanks. Appreciate it. I think cunts are kind of powerful, warm, welcoming, sexy and stuff. So I would just say, you know, she was nasty. 
that is totally or whatever. She was just having but, a bad day. Or she was just having okay, a bad day. Okay, let's move on because there's a lot. Okay. So the next one is appearances count. So this one is interesting. Yeah. Um, basically talking about um, how men generally aren't as careful about their appearance as women, um, but that you should put in some more effort, um, especially when, you know, you know, like talks about coming home all from work and you're tired and you put on the same pair of, you know, jeans, like sweatpants and T-shirt. Um, and I would go further and say it's underwear. Sure. There's so many men wearing yucky underwear so, and thinking it's not a big deal, but me, it's yeah, yucky. But I will finish. OK, um, go ahead. As Sorry. a man, you're probably very conscious how the woman, uh, how women look around you look whether a woman is a partner or not true you may be more concerned with the length of her hemline blah blah but you pay attention although most women take care to look as presentable as possible to their men many men don't return the favor yeah and then she's got a tip we can argue this one if you're the type of guy which i don't agree with, who complains that your wife doesn't make love to you enough my guess is that you'd have more success in that area if you started dressing like prince charming instead of the frog Ooh, see, this is where she could like go off on some stuff, but whatever. So, yeah. So what but are we thinking? I I think appearances do matter. Absolutely. Both 100%, ways. but we're Both not going to act like guys don't give a shit. No, in today's day and age, it's uh, women are the ones who go, oh, these, these pants are comfy. Oh, these shoes are so comfy. True. No. Okay, cool. You're comfy to go on a date in that kind of outfit? Cool. I'm going to go put on sweatpants I, and boxers person, and you're going to see my dick slinging. The person That's, who I'm... It's comfy? No, fuck yeah. off. Now, if you're the type of guy who doesn't give a shit what he looks like, well, have some fucking pride. Have some respect for yourself because looking good, presenting yourself in the best visual possible shows that you have respect for yourself and respect for your appearance as you present yourself. If you're some of the, one, of that guy, one of those guys who thinks that it's cool to show up to take a girl out while you're wearing sweatpants, no. Now, if you show up and she's in comfy clothes or comfy shoes that are, look god-awful, cool. Then grab the sweatpants and go, all right, cool. We're going comfy tonight. <laughs> We're going fucking comfy. Wife See, beater and sweatpants. Let's do this. I, Tip I, for tat. Yeah. And and you know, that just devolves. It actually doesn't help. It it does help to just say, you know, I like when we have date nights, I like for both of us to put on, like, to look good. To Again, to be those people we were before we got committed to each other, where we were still trying, where we were seducing one another, where we were courting each other. And that that is important. But... And I will tell you, so my pet peeve is a single 50s woman, like, you know, in my 50s dating. I am not really thrilled at how many men show up for dates, first dates in shorts. I'm not going to wear shorts on a first date unless it's specifically said, we're going to a picnic or we're going someplace. Please come, you know, I'm going to wear shorts. Please wear shorts and be comfortable or something. Otherwise, I'm dressing a little bit up for a first date. What and kind of dates are these? Though? Are these dinner dates? So no, it's usually like drinks or something. And, what time and of a day? lot of so evening. But like, okay. you know, five o'clock, six but they're at like ice houses or something. And I know it's warm out there. But the fact is, is that I'm still not gonna be wearing a pair of shorts. It, maybe I'll be wearing a sundress or something, but I don't really want to be on a first date. I, I find it when some guy just shows up in like cargo shorts and a shirt and stuff, I'm like, okay, this is just, I, I wanted you to try a little bit. I wanted to be excited. I wanted, so, so I'm I coming from a perspective where like almost everyone I have dated has put in significantly, well, not significantly, but more effort into the way they look than generally I do. Yeah. Like the guy I'm dating now, it's great. Like he, like he do, he's not like a prima donna but he like definitely cares about the way he looks more than i do like i am i mean, i'm so easy guys like you know i'm kidding but i wake up like brush my hair brush my teeth like pretty much put a baseball cap on most days and i'm out the door like i don't wear makeup i don't mm-hmm. if it's something nice i will make an effort like i will generally make more of an effort if i'm going out with girls or it's like a nice date yes but generally like i am always I'm always the less high maintenance in terms of like looks like so it's coming from like a little like in terms not in terms of looks in terms of like yeah how you present yourself appearance yeah so um I would say like I really appreciate the effort but I can see like where you know sometimes you're like okay well am I doing enough like am I like you know should I be doing more or you know is this yeah, and I, I Should I think, be wearing makeup when this guy spent, you know, like, 
I don't know, three minutes doing his hair and stuff, you know, whatever. And, and I don't know that it's particularly makeup or whatever, but I do think that there is a sense, there there is a look to us that looks like whether or not we actually put some effort into it. And when the fact is, is that when we want to impress somebody, um, we take some time, we put some effort in. And so it becomes a question of, well, do you want to impress that person or not? And Or like I, wear so, a bra. Cause I like never wear a bra. Well, but like some people enough, might like that's that. That's usually an effort. Yeah. Some so people like might like that. So it just, it just depends. But if you look like you just rolled out of bed on a regular basis and then just show up, then yeah, probably mm-hmm. it might be nice to have them. You know, I would they say might I'm on the very low end dressed. of like the female spectrum. I, yeah. I don't know. To well, me, as, as am I, as I sit here with my hair up and no makeup on my face and shorts and a t-shirt, but I'm also just working. It also you know? depends what situation it is. Again, like if you know it's a nice date, if you know, like, you know, I think it's it's different than if you're just going to go out for like, you know, I don't know. I think dates, again, if you're going to call it a date or you're just going to call it a hangout. I think dates, people should probably invest a little bit because that is the whole idea of a date is this idea of courting, of, of romancing, of connecting somehow. And so... It should be even if the date is going to the baseball game and you just wear the right jersey or something and you wear the cute shoes that match and something. I don't the know. Booty shorts. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I mean, this is where I think men and women differ a bit is because, you know, a girl will get nervous about a first date. and What am I going to wear? What am I going to wear? And her friends will encourage her. Oh, we'll wear this or be comfortable or stuff like that. Guys won't think about it. They'll just put something on. But your guy friends will look at you knowing you're going on a first date and be like, that's what the fuck you're wearing? Like, that's what you want her to see you in? Right. Like, rethink this, bro. Right, which is Girls good, won't cause... check each other like that. Yeah, we will. Yeah, we really? will. Really? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would oh, totally yeah, yeah. tell yeah. someone not to wear that on a yeah. first date. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Y'all are also two, two anomalies that I'm here talking with, so. I don't know. I think every woman I, I know, I know some young women who would, like, get on the phone. They would be... They were different places. They would FaceTime. Okay, what should I wear? How much makeup? Blah, blah, blah. And get ready together, even virtually and stuff. So I don't know. Hmm, But I do think appearances matter. And the fact is how we show up, how we appear in this world when we're going to be with somebody does give some reflection on how important we value, you know, them, how, what we think of ourselves. Again, because when I felt fat and ugly, then I did not dress up and I didn't look make any effort to look good because i thought it was hopeless so that said a lot about me too take pride so. in your fucking appearance that's yeah, yeah. Agreed. that's the yes. takeaway so we can so yeah. we can say this. i'm not sure about her tip that if you're not getting enough in the bedroom you'd have more success about if you but then again i don't know maybe if but i were again, her husband i would have showed up in actual like steel metal knight's armor with a sword and shit and been like fucking yeah. here as no. opposed to but what, really like they a, do need men like if you I mean, if, you're not a, clean, if you haven't cleaned out your underwear drawer in two years, clean it out and get some new ones. Because, yeah, oh agree. my God, that can and be, if, also if you, men this, drops his drawers and you like, ugh, and you go, this oh, is also cringe, it's not like a good personal thing. hygiene. To me, that's just yes. way more like fine if you're wearing the same old, like not all the time, but like you're not a clean person. There's just not even no point even talking about like what appearance is to me. Yeah. Like if you don't, if you don't take like, if you don't uh, shower yeah. enough or whatever, like right. start there. But that's, yeah, that's obvious. So, okay. Yeah. So next, um, you can't hurry love. Um, the whatever. notion that men get turned on a lot faster than women do is very true. Women need time to prepare themselves for sex. I'm not talking about the type of foreplay that goes on when you already have your clothes off and you're in bed. What woman wish is that men would realize that if a man wants to have sex, he has to put romance first. Um, okay, so again, she's using that backwards word romance that now we just associate with like bullshit, bullshit, just to get what you want week, that yeah. we talked about last week in our, our show about the sex challenge. But okay, let's what she's really saying is, guys, you have to turn your partner on. When she's turned on, She'll want to have sexy fun with you. If she's not turned on, she won't want to have sexy fun with you. Therefore, don't just think and assume that she's going to want it because in some respects, yeah, they, we can say men are like microwaves and women have to like, it's like boiling a pot of water. It can take longer, um, but it's all about context and you have to figure out with your particular partner how to turn them on 
if you want to get sexy fun. And, That's just and it. then she prefaces by saying, like, you have to continue that even after you've whatever your long term commitment is. At. So basically, like getting married or whatever it is, you can't, right. you know, you did used to put in an effort. Like, why are you not now? Yeah. Yeah. There's no like, OK, 30 second warm up. Here we go. Like a yeah. microwave. I'm just, not going to argue that. Just doesn't I mean, work that way. Take the time. Yeah. But I would suggest also that men might settle for, OK, let's just flip that switch 30 seconds. Let's just, you know, wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Long term, that is not going to reward them any more than it actually rewards us. It's just men might settle for it because they think that's all there is. But it is not the best sexy. Again, if you don't have the romantic and emotional intimacy, it is not your best sexy. Okay, this is more anatomical. A clitoris is not just a small penis. Um, the fuck? So it's basically... I think what she begins out is saying like men have associated the clitoris with a woman's ability to have an orgasm, which is what I guess the dick would be. But they haven't figured out the clitoris is a lot more delicate than a penis. Many women can't bear to have the clitoris touched. Sometimes a little lube will help. Sometimes it won't. Women with a sensitive clit may need to have the area around the clitoris caressed, rubbed, stimulated, without causing pain. So guys, store this fact away in your memory. Just because a clitoris grows bigger and harder when the woman gets excited doesn't make it a penis. Some women like their men to be a little rough. For most, though, rough doesn't mean pain, but being forceful. Since you can't know ahead of time, begin gently. Yeah, so I think that there is um, the idea that clitorises are very much more sensitive than a cock so there are a lot of men who even just they won't realize that they're being a little bit rougher um just in terms of just their stroking and stuff like that so generally i think it is always better to start softer Um, plus as the clitoris gets more aroused and engorged then it can take more stimulation but um and it's not like a cock in that I say cocks basically hand, you know, stroke up and down, up and down. You do that long enough and it's going to explode. Clitoris is, if you just kind of rub in one direction, like there is not a one stroke fits all for every clit. There just isn't. So unfortunately, I think we are harder. You know, we, and frankly, even the same woman, one day it could be X, Y, Z, and the next day it's Z, A, C. You know, there's, there's no telling what it is that's going to necessarily get us off from one day to the other. Um, although most of us will have some sort of patterns and things that will work on a regular basis. You have to figure that out. But so you have to be more creative. You have to be more, um, you have to pay more attention if you truly want to pleasure a pussy. I think that is very, very much true. But then again, I think a lot of women just think, oh, here, I'll just, you know, give a blowjob in, out, hand job, whatever. And they're not paying attention to a mm-hmm. cock. But they may reach an orgasm, but I don't think they're still giving the kind of pleasure that is so deserved she, there as well. She also does mention something I actually find more interesting. Um, like the clit is huge and complex and like you should definitely study it up. But she talks about um, women's breasts. So they treat some men have the same attitude towards women's breasts as they do the clitoris. They need them as if they were dope. This definitely happens to you because I have big yes. boobs. Forgetting that they're made of tissue are sensitive and can even be bruised. The partners of these men do also appreciate, this is for sure, appreciate if they look a little bit more care with their knees and elbows. And if they'd make a serious effort not to not only lean on their hair, but fucking pull their hair out of their head while they're giving head. I don't understand where, why you want to make me bald when you're finishing. But like it's somehow every single time it's like it feels like you're about to like also the fact wait, that like wait, wait, hold on. You're going in so many different directions. Do you mean that when you're giving head that the guy is holding yeah, onto the hair and hair. he's pulling your hair? Yeah, that's sort of this primal thing and they get carried away. And, and then also about- the fact that like fine if you want to finish inside me, but I can't breathe to an extent when you push my head down all the way. Like, I can't physically breathe. Yes. And so then I will start gagging because I can't breathe. Yes. So so men like it when you gag, though. Almost Just keep care of other people's body parts that aren't just the clit or the dick. Like, I know, like, when I do ride my dude reverse cowgirl, I have to lean on his shins. 
like on yeah. to, like and and he hates that because it hurts and yes. it hurt, and I know it does so I try and like you know be conscious of that so you have yeah to, I was gonna say find a different place or find a headboard yeah. you know and lean yeah and do something different but yeah so be cognizant but again I think sometimes men like it when you gag that's part of the thing they love it when you can't handle everything and you choke and things are dripping there is absolute delight for so many men having a woman be messy in the middle of sexy because most women actually pay attention to their looks and whatever and don't sort of show up in the world messy so there's this like power and feels like abandoned and people getting carried away and by lust and desire so you're so quiet I just, I've never thought about pulling on my wife's hair while oh, really? she's giving it. No, not pulling on it. No. Oh, it's very much, that's very much a dominance thing. Yes. And because you can use it to sort of yeah, basically exactly, to, to face like fuck a- and something to control things. But there's something like primal for, and for women, actually, it's funny, the, the sensation of having your hair fisted in somebody's hand is definitely, well, it's a primal I, I thing. Get, I get hair pulling during sex and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. like... There's teeth down there, and there's like that's the last fucking thing I want to do is screw this thing up to where it never happens again. Okay, well that's not gonna happen, but at the same time, yeah. just like be cognizant. Like for example, like when I play with the guy I'm seeing with balls, like sometimes I squeeze too hard because I do forget, like you know, I know balls. I get a little and, like, carried he away. Fucking hates it. He hates it. He's like, ow! Like he he like often either like puts them away, and I try to you know I try and be you know, but they're very sensitive. Like you gotta yeah. remember. Yes. So it works both ways for sure. Yes. Because, and I will say, so the kneading, you know, like it's bread dough of boobs. I got to say. I, Unless you're giving like a massage. Yeah. No, guys they love just, to do that. Everyone I've do, ever been I, with, they love to like play with your tits when you're like sitting squeeze. and watching Well, I mean, everybody likes to play with tits. Yeah. So, I mean, guys, they are girls, kind of squishy. Does. They're like, you know, yeah, they're, which they're is squish fine. balls. But, but I don't know. Like, again, this is, get to know your partner because I'm okay if you just want to do that, but it is not really going to turn me on. No, no, but, no. This but I, a- I have very sensitive nipples. And so I love it when my nipples are played with. It's just that kneading my boobs doesn't really do it. No. So. Again, mm-hmm. you just have to try these things and then kind of figure That's out That's why if you're going to do works. it, like the only reason I would think of kneading like that is if you're giving an actual like pectoral massage. Like to, there's muscle under there for men and women and you can massage that muscle if no, but you... It's but you're so sensitive. practical. You're, I, it's not the a fact muscle. is is that men it's love like a, to just have a handful yeah. of boob. I do too, just, but I don't sit there and yeah. like mess well, with it like it's um, dough. Oh my, yeah. My, yeah, everyone Some I've ever do. been with. Now, they don't yeah. like need it but they will like play with it watch tv well yeah yeah, yeah like a titty well yeah. I, I can uh, put my hand in my toy. pants and play with that or i can play with your tits which one do you want some days while i'm depends. watching TV. i don't know I mean, you know <laughs> i'm okay frankly i still get kind of amused watching a guy play with himself it just cracks me up so i don't know why but this is just me so anyways okay so right. boogie through the rest we of do these. we want you to pay attention to our bodies there's that okay what else? Okay, women need to ba- bask in the afterglow. I'm not sure I agree with this one so much. This is just definitely in my own personal opinion. Women have many different complaints about ways men make love. Um, but the vote is that men are too quick to go to sleep after sex. Women take longer to get aroused and longer to come down from that aroused state. If you roll over and fall asleep or get up and go home or go to the basement and watch a game, she'll feel abandoned. And leaving her feeling alone is not a good way to end a lovemaking session. Um, so she calls it after play. Um, oh, that's long, funny. Cause in kinky stuff with BDSM, it's called after care. Mm-hmm. And I think actually it's a really important thing. And in the BDSM world, people will discuss what their needs are and needs and desires in advance so that everybody gets those needs met. And I think that is just brilliant. And every couple should do that. So, so it says, isn't your wife or partner worth an extra 10 minutes of conscious consciousness? And the answer to that question yeah. is yes. After play is an extra benefit. If you play your cards right, the afterglow will last right up until the next day and become the start of foreplay for the next session. Don't tell me you'll be too tired then. Yeah. So, so yeah. I think you should discuss because I think there are women who just want to kind of roll over and go to sleep and maybe some days they want that. And But we do want to feel seen and appreciated and not just like, okay, I'm done. Now I can like ignore you that doesn't feel good no, for the ignoring anybody thing is yeah. stupid but i think if you want to put on a game like in the or i don't know, watch tv like it's not the end of the world 
to me. It, it depends. Like, I don't like it. If, if we fooled around and there's not a hurry, like to immediately get distracted, because I do like just hanging out. I love just snuggling when you're satisfied. To me, that that's just, I don't know, that's joy. It's indulgence. It's um, relaxing just to have that free time with no pressure and not to be building to anything, just to be hanging. So I do like Yeah, it. I have no problem with that either. And I, majority of the time, sex doesn't make me tired. Mm-hmm. Ooh, sex that's awesome. gets me really? energized. Yeah. Really? Because all the extra testosterone, like, I don't know what it is, but like somebody goes, oh, you, cool. like people say, oh, you should masturbate before bed. You'll get tired. Nope. That'll wake me up. Wow. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. Sex mm. makes me kind of tired after like a long like, like for a like whole like 30 working. seconds for me but then after that like after my body like after the blood returns to my brain yeah i'm i'm back to like mm. all right let's go full steam like that's funny. but generally that's i think like this afterglow thing isn't like if you're with the re- a good person like i think this pertains like i've never really been in a relationship that i considered good where like the guy doesn't at least want to like cuddle and watch TV or do something that isn't like, unless he has to go, like unless he has to like, yeah, you know, right. whatever. Well, that's but right. at the same time, like generally, cause you are like, you've been like really intimate and stuff. Like, I don't think that it's something that you have to like pull. pull I don't know. It's not. I, I think it happens a lot more frequently with people who have been together for yeah, sure, years on end that. where it's yeah. just like, okay, I'll talk to you in the morning. You know, we don't have to talk now and stuff. But um, then I do think you're missing that, that sort of emotional intimacy and just together, just because you want to be together. Mm-hmm. So, okay. okay. What, we're halfway through? We got five more? Uh, um, I think we're, we're, no. we're, we're over halfway. We're on the six. Okay, cool. Kinky sex isn't sexy sex. Oh, that's bullshit. So. Sorry, Dr. Ruth. I love you, but I disagree with you. I received many letters from women asking why men always want them to do something kinky. Probably the most frequently asked request is for the husband to watch his wife make love to another woman. Some men just want to watch while others plan or join in. Some men don't care whether the other person is a man or a woman. They just want to take part in a threesome. Other men want to join a wife swapping group or visit a sex club. Now, I'm not saying women never instigate this type of behavior because they do, nor am I placing any moral judgment on couples who want to expand their sexual horizons. However, just because... Millions have read Fifty Shades of Grey doesn't mean that you can assume that a partner you are with would enjoy partaking in such behavior. One thing the wives of these men want to know is why is why and I can't give them a good answer. And maybe that men have more active imaginations and maybe they've wanted to watch watch wait watch too much porn. Whatever the reason most women want no part in these scenes. They're quite what? Okay. They're quite content with having sex with their man without anyone else looking or joining in. Yeah, so I think that might be a sign of the times also because because Dr. Ruth was a much older woman because she was talking to sort of older crowds because um, BDSM was not really acceptable then. It's still not really acceptable. Um, I have no idea if really more men want BDSM than women. I kind of tend to think not because... There are shit tons. I mean, there's like 9 million people in the kinky, the worldwide kinky community. And I don't think it's very. That's it? Well, that's in the like in this one active group. Yeah. Yeah. I also think that like um, the first thing she described is like not that like it's not kinky. It's having threesomes or like voyeurism. But that's to me is not exactly what you would consider kinky. Right. And threesomes, frankly, are like I what did we I think i said the stats were like 75 percent of, of people men and women have a threesome fantasy i don't think she can put that at all just on men it may be that men are more willing to vocalize it but um and the same thing with 50 shades of gray um so yeah i don't think being swingers and stuff is just with men i don't think that's the same as kinky and quite frankly i think that if she understood BDSM and power play more, she might realize that every single couple, every relationship dynamic involves some power. And if we recognize it and deal with it, it can make it way more fun than just ignoring it. So I think she just missed the boat on that one. Well, Um, she does say so so. in her tip thing. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. 
Um, I'd never tell men to stop fantasizing. She's all in favor. If you want to ask your wife or girlfriend about a particular fantasy, go ahead. Just don't try to pressure her if she says no. Instead, pretend you're doing whatever turns you on when you're with her. If you keep pre- pestering her, you'll just turn her off rather than getting kinky sex. You'll have no sex at all. Okay, so there's some part. So I and I appreciate that part. she wasn't judgmental. She's not. She really doesn't judge people by what they do, um, except that something she just can't understand. Um, so she doesn't understand the appeal. Um, I think one thing she just slid in there is that I think is absolutely horrible for relationships, which is that she tells men just think in your head about your fantasy while you're having whatever sexy with your yeah, wife, and that, part that is such a wedge between you that that's literally taking your mind. And your emotions out of this connection and is not going to do well for your relationship. I think therapists for years have been saying that, oh, who cares about who you fantasize with while you're fucking somebody? It makes a difference. I know when somebody's thinking about what we're doing and when their head is gone. And so does almost everybody else. It's not good for intimacy. Might get you an orgasm, but that's that's it. So, um, and I, but I do agree, don't pressure somebody, but encourage them to think about what it is they want and really... If it's, for example, if your fantasy is a threesome, again, think about why. What is it about that 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 feels good? Because then you can find workarounds for it without doing things that one of you might not want or not. So the same thing like with spanking is that, is it really the act of the hitting? Is it the power? Is it the control? Is it the scene? Is it the imagery of, of a short skirt flipped up? There's so many different things about that, that when we're willing and able to talk, we can go further into it and find probably a way that you and your partner can both enjoy something about that. Being on the same page, not having each of you living out a fantasy in your own head. So that's my thought. What about yours, Aaron? I mean, I agree with all like everybody's different. Everybody has something different that turns them on. There's no yes or no. Like there are, I guarantee that there are plenty of men out there who's, wives or girlfriends want them to do some kinky shit and they're like whoa that's beyond what i had in mind Mm -hmm. but now i will say i feel like guys are more um i guess accepting to if she were to bring something that would be beyond what a guy would think is his boundary to go yeah i'll fucking try it whereas i my stereotype of women is that they'd be like, no, I'm not even going to try. Like, that's fucking weird. Like, I feel like guys, just because they, they'd be like, yeah, fucking, well, I'll, I'll try. Sometimes, but I will tell you that men are more likely to freeze up and think, oh shit, I won't know what I'm doing. And that's what will stop them. Not, it's not the lack of it willing to be adventure, adventurous. It's that, oh shit, I don't know how to do that. What if I don't do it well? That's where men will be like, oh wait, or, this is how I, like I asked my husband to spank it. me and he freaked out because he didn't know what to do. And then we never did anything. It was just his fear. It wasn't, I don't think any moral, you know, concerns about should he spank or not. And I've had clients, coaching clients that will come to me because a woman has asked them to do something that they didn't know how to do. And literally it can cause ED issues because they're so stressed out because they want to be good at what they're doing. And men are supposed to be good at sexy. And then when they don't know, in this case, it was one, one gentleman was um, a woman asked him to choke her. And he freaked out. He didn't know how to do it. And he was a young man. And suddenly he had massive ED issues. And it was just crisis of confidence. So, yeah. So things like know. that. I mean, well, choking is one thing because I mean, we never got into the Trevor Bauer thing of what is too much. But uh, like, yeah, I don't you know. Need to I guess be careful with it. No doubt about it. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. You need to be more like Ted Lasso and, and be more curious about things. So if somebody, like yes. if your partner brings you something that is, hey, I want to do this and you're more nervous, don't fucking think of it as I'm going to fuck it up. Think of it as I'm about to learn something. Enjoy Ex- learning something exactly. new about everything in life. Yes, thank you. That's the point. Not yes. about sexy. Enjoy, yes. Just enjoy learning. I love learning about anything. It can be the you. dumbest thing in the world. If I learn something new, I'm happy. That's why like sexyatschool.com. I'm like, everybody should be going there because... You either, if you watch a class on, you know, how to blow his mind while loving his body or the art of orally pleasuring her, like if you know everything in that class, then damn, you massive gold stars to you, right? You walk out and feel like, hey, I got this, right? But if you learn something new, it's like, oh my God, so cool because where else do we learn this shit? So I'm with you. Let's learn. All right. Um, Sorry. We got to finish this list. Yeah. So I think this is all good advice. Um, 
you know, definitely don't read Fifty Shades and think that that's that's my little end tidbit. Think oh, that's yeah. real life. Right, right. That was not even good BDSM. They yeah. that was consent or violations. Any of these, like, there was yeah abuse weird was Netflix bad. movies that they they're putting out now. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. understand. Like, I mean, I guess there's an audience, but yeah, definitely yeah. far from reality. There's one. What was it? Um, Sex, Sex Life. Yeah, Sex yeah, Life, yeah. where they go to a swingers party. And that pisses me off so much because they go to the swingers party. They haven't talked about what's okay. They haven't agreed amongst the couple amongst what's okay for them to do with or without each other. And then other people are touching them without asking. And I'm like, that shit doesn't happen. That's like 50 shades of gray. They're, they're taking things and then they're bringing up and making bad things out of it. So sensationalizing. Sensational. It. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So and sometime we're going to do a show about swingers club and etiquette at swingers clubs mm-hmm. and things like that. But um, because they should be safe, even for anybody, whether you want to swing or not. So yeah. but we'll get to okay, that. So. so wandering eyes means less sex. Um, what? Men like to look at women. Women usually don't mind being looked at, but there's a time and a place for everything. I mean, I completely agree with this next sentence. If you're out on a date and you see a beautiful woman walk by and you gawk at her on with your date or your wife can see your tongue hanging out, the situation isn't going to sit well with her. She'll get angry. I don't know about that. At you, you'll have a fight for the next few hours. Odds of the two of you having a sexual encounter will be swimming. Women like attention, and when they're with a man with whom they're having sex, they expect... As much of it, uh, attention as possible. Women don't find fighting for your attention particularly sexy, and that includes competing against ball games, sports cars, and most of all, pretty women. Your lover wants to think that you consider her most desirable woman on earth. Can she really expect that when you're busy staring at other women? I don't know. I disagree with this. Obviously, yeah, I would say if you're on a date and you're like looking at ass the whole time like every girl that walks by without it being something that like perhaps your date is on like you could say like oh my god that girl is, I don't know about that but at the same time like I, I don't know just I, be respectful so for example if you're at, you know when you're at dinner if you're sitting in a position where you're watching all the women walk to the restroom and literally like you're a man and all these asses are going by well Okay, your eyes are going to go to them, right? My eyes are going to go to them, to everybody who yeah, walks I by. Yeah, I would agree. This so thing, yeah. then just say, you know what? I, this is distracting me and I want to be able to focus on you. So how about, do you mind if we just switch positions or something, right? You can do different things. You can acknowledge that we all, we appreciate beauty and we notice when things are moving. And so it is not, it's not to be unexpected or to be shamed if there's somebody striking and you, your eyes caught from it. But then you have the option of coming back to focus. And that's where it has to be. So it's that gawking over and stuff. It's not okay. But I also think that I disagree with this sentence. Women like attention. And when they're with a man whom they're having sex with whom they expect as much of his attention as possible. Look, like I think that number one with every distraction that we have in today's world, our phones and work and friends and all that other shit, like. I just think that completely demanding 100% of his attention when you're together is ridiculous to me. Right. But I will tell you that there are so many now who complain because they're with someone and they're on their phone or they are distracted yeah, well, by things. There, there are not people who go no with attention. Place, but right. at the same time, I think it's ridiculous to expect that this person is like, I don't know. Right, there has the to time. be reasonable attention. But then again, if this person doesn't ever prioritize you, then it cannot feel very good and I certainly know that feeling and um and deal with people all the time who are struggling with it so you you do have to balance it but it's never going to be perfect and I think it is ridiculous I think Jimmy um Jimmy Carter said oh you know if I if I lust after somebody in my mind that's cheating and stuff I'm like no you are human we see things we see beauty we see attractiveness we see sexy and that can turn us on just don't let it become your focus. Use that to fuel your connection with your partner and be like, okay, wow, I just saw that person. Oh my God. Okay, look, but your legs are so good. You know, find then the, the, the things that you love about your partner and focus on those things and emphasize that. We just don't want to be left in the dirt and we don't want to be, we don't want to feel like we're less than to our partners, whether you're male or female, I think. So um, if, uh, Oh my God, have you, I've been to dinner sometimes and there's a really hot male waiter and like, they're just beautiful. I, and, ah, uh, you know, and stuff like that. And I've had to really tone it down because the person I'm with will be like, oh, you think they're hot. And I'm like, well, 
Yeah, I mean, I do. I, I can't help that. I, but I'm not trying to flirt with them. I'm deliberately trying not to because I don't want to make you feel I mean, less than. Wherever you draw the line, like some or at yeah. least your relationship. Like I don't give a shit about Instagram models, you know. Oh, but right. at the same time, like if you start DMing them or talking to girls on Instagram, like, yeah, that's crossing the line. So like you have to. Right. You have to figure out for yourself where it is. Yeah. Yeah. And you, guys, if you ever get, you know, she looks at you and is like, why the hell are you looking at that girl while you're out on date night? All you have to do is simply go, she looks really nice in that dress, but you would look a million times better. You should go ask her where she got it from. Yeah. Unless it's a dress that wouldn't look good on your well, partner. Yeah. yeah. That That's always a, an easy get yeah. out of jail free card. Yeah. But yeah, have a couple of things like that that you can always do yeah. and say, oh yeah, I really like, she's got really something, but this is nothing on what, you know, turns me on yeah. about you. Yeah. Like, so, look, she yeah. has to wear eight inch heels because she has no ass to actually stick out. So well, actually yeah. me, funnily enough, me and the guy I'm seeing with had this argument. Well, no, we didn't have an argument. It was a completely normal discussion. He was like, I don't understand why girls always compare themselves to other girls that they say. I think we were at the pool and I was saying something like, oh, she's got like such a, she's so whatever, you know? And he was like, men don't do that. I'm like, Mm, that's yes. so not true yeah like he's like Men oh do. girls like yeah, you do. know they're always talking about like they wish this they say this girl at the pool blah blah i'm like okay maybe we're just more vocal about it but yes. i know dudes do the same thing oh yeah so. but we are more vocal about it because men don't admit their weaknesses as much and stuff but hell the whole you know penis size is absolutely the <laughs> yeah. the pinnacle of comparison so yeah Anyways, all right. Those ways. Um, slam bam, thinky ma'am doesn't cut the mustard. We're almost done. We'll. Yeah. Uh, well, it does sometimes. So pre- basically, premature. Uh, okay, now I'm getting down to the real nitty gritty. Obviously, women need time to get sufficiently aroused. A man who can't keep it up will cause them problems. Premature ejaculation is a term used for you know whatever if you're wondering whether uh, you can explain it. if you're wondering whether you fall into this category don't go pulling out a stopwatch i don't classify a man as premature ejaculator by some predetermined amount of time he can last all you need to ask yourself is whether you're dissatisfied with your performance if you want to last longer and can't then you need to do the do a homework assignment a given chapter i don't know what it is chapter 20 if on the other hand you come as quickly as a jackrabbit but neither you nor your partner much care because you can do things with your big toe that only a chimp can duplicate, then don't worry about it. Right. So that's that's what, again, if you think about it as sexy fun, there are so many different ways to have sexy fun. Erection and penetration are only a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of it. And if that's where the sex for dummies, now right? Now bringing up dumb. dick size. Yeah, right, right, right. But, but no, it just, if you are not creative enough to find other fun things to do before, during, and after you a man's orgasm, then you please let us help you because you deserve more. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, I think is fun once in a while. It is fun and it can be for people, but certainly not if that's the only thing that you've got. So of course, being fucked for an hour every time wouldn't be fun for me either. I'd be totally bored. Right. So there's all sorts of things. So I say, don't worry so much about when you come. Frankly, just be grateful and thrilled that you get the pleasure of an orgasm and just be willing, again, to give as much as you're getting on a regular basis and use whatever your big toe, your chin, your nose, you know, hands, whatever you've got to give and get pleasure. That's sexy fun. Cool. Changing diapers is sexy. What? How many of you fathers did or did, did do or did change diapers? I'm sure you never thought of it as sexy, but you never realized how important a role changing a baby's diaper has in your sex life. Then you don't deserve the title terrific lover. Mommies change a million diapers, but just because they don't, they do doesn't make them task any more pleasant. Too many dads think that because moms change diapers all the time, even if she works at a full time job outside the home, she likes doing it. Believe me, oh, believe me, changing diapers is not a job anybody can really like. Oh, sure, babies are fun, but some element of the diaper changing chore is offensive to us all. So when dad offers to do a dirty job, keywords offers with a smile on his face that makes mom feel very good. So good that later that night. Whoa, I did definitely disagree with this. So good that later that night she'll still remember and daddy may get his reward. This is weird. Now, of course, this idea applies to any task that always seems to fall on mom doing the dishes folding laundry dusting bookshelves don't do it just because you expect something but if you volunteer for some of the dirty work i guarantee you'll earn your reward 
interesting. Okay, so that's just a really long way of saying that having a partner who contributes and helps us take care of the things that need to be done in the family and otherwise can feel good. It can inspire um, affection. It can inspire um, appreciation, respect, gratitude, um, and free up some of our energy to then be gifted back in terms of affection and sexy. So I think it's it's that way. It's, it's just um, the same thing that talking to your partner does. Yes, yeah, sex, you know? but sex for rewards idea is re- is insane. To okay, me. so I got to say, I'm not so sure. So here, here's the thing. I had a client who really wanted, she really wanted the house clean, the kitchen clean. It drove her nuts when there were dishes in the sink and they would go to bed. It just pissed her off. And yet she didn't want to have sexy every night. It pissed off her husband when they would go to bed and she didn't want to have sexy. And she's complaining to me about this. And I was like, okay, why are you, quote, entitled? Why is it right, okay, for you to demand the kitchen be cleaned? But it's not okay for him to demand what makes him feel good every night, which is to have sexy before he goes to sleep. So why can't you just find a way to work to exchange these things? Why can't maybe cleaning the dishes be done in your underwear together so that you both get turned on, you get happy, and then it you start touching and teasing and splashing water each other, and then you go to bed and then you have sexy. I don't think it's reasonable to think that what one gender wants or one person wants is better, different, more right, or more okay than the other. The fact is, we are individuals, we all have different priorities. And relationships are about finding ways where you both get your needs and wants and desires met in a healthy, happy, non resentful way. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about the, this specific client, but if your sex life is good enough to me and you put your significant other on like a chore list or a to-do list of you do these things and then you get sex or whatever, if they're doing it right, you're enjoying it too, so you're winning twice. Yeah. Like, he's right. only getting the one victory because I guarantee doing the dishes or taking out the trash or vacuuming doesn't make him feel good. He doesn't give a shit. It's, it's just something that like... But he does to please her, which does feel good. But it's more of the, it comes back in a better, whereas, you know, if the vacuum, if the carpet didn't get vacuumed, he could go to sleep without a fucking problem. If it bothers you that much, you already get that itch scratched and then you get the orgasm itch scratched too. So you get two for one. There you go. Right. But Uh, she says, I I guarantee you'll earn a reward. Yeah. Well, that's. Don't ever use the word guarantee with sex. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's it's just not. But there. I do and think that making an effort around the house is mutual. Like right. it's not oh, yeah. based on one. Like it doesn't have to be so gendered as like mowing the lawn or doing laundry. Like you can obviously women can mow the lawn, men can do the laundry. It doesn't matter. But like at the same time, like if you're just the one person who doesn't do shit and the other person is doing everything, they ain't gonna like fly. Right, for that shouldn't long. be either way, right? It, it has to, uh, you have to be giving as good as you're getting. It's just that we can do we can give in different ways than we get. And I think that the idea that we can turn on, like if you have to mow the lawn, let's say if it's Aaron who mows the lawn and stuff, well, I'm telling you, sending him out to mow the lawn while he's wearing a remote control vibrating cock ring would pretty much turn mowing the lawn into a sexy experience, sexy fun for him. And therefore, like, that's a good thing. That So everybody can win when we are creative and we play with power in that sense. So it's not like, punishment of oh you have to mow the lawn it's okay yeah you're gonna serve me and this is gonna turn me on I'm gonna be turned on knowing that you're out there wearing this and I'm controlling it and you've got a heart on and you still have to mow that lawn and you don't get an orgasm until afterwards own that freaking power make it fun because again everybody wins that way yeah um that would be just a hell of a thing to do mowing the lawn with a vibrating cock ring that just sounds bad i just do you know how sweaty and gross i am when i mow the lawn the lawn getting mowed very well yeah but so much fun to watch i like, I haven't seen it in person i but i've had clients do it and stuff and i just see it in my head and it cracks me also, up so you're yeah. yeah you're like you operating like heavy like kind of dangerous machinery so yeah but you're really pushing oh my God, it's hot as shit and you're well you could so do it in the sweaty. evening you could do it at different times you get sweaty during sexy anyway but so Anyways, many different things 
So yeah, last doing one. dishes and sexy underwear and stuff and having to do a strip tease while your partner's sitting there with a glass of wine and watching and telling you, no, 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 scrub that a little bit Make more. Make him dust yes. in only yeah. a, a French maid's outfit. Yes, so many oh, different fuck. options. Yes. Um, All right, our last just one. Just because you can't doesn't mean you won't. I, I, I really do like this one. I want you to talk to your older gen. I want to talk to older gentlemen. I don't think this only applies to older guys. I know you can't always perform the way you used to. That doesn't mean your sexual life is over, but you do need more time to get ready for the next sexual offers. Remember this truism that many of you either don't want to admit or just never realize you don't need an erection to satisfy your wife. Yes. Very, very often if the wife feels in the mood and the husband doesn't, he'll either ignore it her desires or he'll try to have an erection then when he can't he'll give up the on the idea of sex but no law says that you have to have an erection have sex you can please your wife in a variety of ways you can give her a fabulous orgasm with your fingers your tongue or a vibrator i.e yes let's stop this term sex and think of sexy fun that's the goal so erection is not necessary for sexy fun ask any lesbian don't be selfish because you're not in the mood doesn't mean she's has to be frustrated and don't be don't feel like a failure again to be a man is not to have an erection to be a man is to be able to pleasure your partner and you do not need an erection to do that so all right here here cheers to dr ruth a good way to end the book yes i thought generally a pretty good list i think yeah there was some good stuff not Mm -hmm. not a terrible way to, to to i would say like I, I do think that these are actually things that women wish men knew about sex, which I'm surprised. Um, they're unique. They're not as, um, you know, not as like common as we would think. So yeah. good. All right. Well, thank you all. I hope that all of you learned a thing or two about pleasing your partner and getting pleased yourself. If I you am- disagree or agree, feel free to hit us up. I mean, yes, DMs are open. Uh, come with us at come with us podcast on Facebook, on Instagram at come with us pod on Twitter. Uh, come with us confessions at gmail.com for the email address. Come with con- come with us confessions at gmail.com. If you agree with one of our sides of the argument or agree disagree with everything we said, fucking let us know. Yes. We'd be interested to you know pick your brain and see exactly what we went wrong in your mind. Always, yeah. we always want to hear from you. The yeah. good, the bad, the ugly. Again, this is the podcast you need when you want the bare naked truth about love, sex, and relationships. I'm Beth Darling, your sexy genius from sexyedschool.com here with Aaron and Tina. And thank you so much for joining us for Come With Us Podcast. We'll see you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Come With Us Podcast. Be sure to follow us on social media at Come With Us Podcast and send in your questions, comments, and confessions to comewithusconfessions at gmail.com. Until next time, keep it fun, flirty, and naughty.